This is the power supply out of the Fujitsu Siemens Esprimo P2540 desktop computer dating to about 2010. I got three of these computers out of the trash a while ago and I'm going to give you up until now to spot the issue and this guy is not doing very well and indeed I have tried the computers by just pairing them on with a different power supply and they work just fine uh, whereas these power supplies appear to be entirely dead, all of them. The computers have obviously been used in the same place, in the same application for roughly the same amount of time so I'm quite certain that this is going to be the issue with every single one of them. So let's just uh, have a quick look at this power supply and, uh, and then just uh, fix it. So it's a Delta power supply rated uh, 300 watts. If I look at the label we have uh, 15 amps on the 12 volt rail and you know whatever on the rest of them. So it's a very basic power supply, passive PFC, dual input cap, so this is going to be one of those crude dual voltage supply birds. It's here. I'm going to have a switch, we're going to be 230 volts only, doesn't matter, I'm not going to put it anywhere else. Uh, all caps seem to be LTEC branded, but uh, I can only spot this one as being properly bad. This is relatively common for of these kinds of Delta power supplies. I've seen it many times where we just have one of the a kind of probably rectify caps for the 5 volt standby there uh, which goes bad which causes power supplies to get straight into tick mode when you try and power it on and that's about it. So let's just have a quick measure around with the uh, ever so infamous ESR meter that I can't tell you anything about and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so let's just start by checking a couple of the output caps, so I'm not going to really read anything off the caps, just measure them and see if it looks good. Uh, 33 milliohms on those, that's fine. That's probably the 12 volt output, or for the 5 volt output, or 3.3 either way. 2200, 6.3 volts, that is 60 milliohms, uh, a bit higher than I'd like to see in a cap like that, but it's Fine, it's not failed yet. Not to such an extent as to cause issues with the operation of the unit anyway. Uh, this is clearly another cap on the same rail. Similar impedance, bit of a dicky connection there, but yeah. Under 100 milliohms in general is fine and thing like this. So let's now measure the uh, obviously bad one. And it's a 2200 microfarad, 10 volt, and bam. 200 milliohms, 650 microfarads. That one is a goner. And just for kicks, let's measure the primary caps. So they're 470 microfarads, 200 volt rated. Uh, that's 100 million. That's actually very good for a cap like that. And the other one, they're obviously in series. Yeah, almost 200 million. But that's that's just fine. In general, for these primary side caps, I like to see under a name, and I'm happy. So yeah, just gonna swap this guy out. And I think this guy is going to live again. And if we look really closely down in there, around the failed cap, we can notice a couple of things. First, uh, the adhesive for capacitors actually failed. That's not my doing. It's just failed over time and turned brittle. Uh, and another thing when we can notice that this thing seems to have been running very hot. And we even have some decoloration of a PC board down there. So this particular area of the PCB obviously runs quite hot during normal operation, so it really is no wonder that this cap has failed. Although it is a bit of a cause for concern to see that choke running so hot. Granted, this could just be a choke in series with a capacitor, and with a bad cap there's going to be a lot of current running through that, so it could just be a symptom. And out she comes negative facing the fan. So not surprisingly this is an LTEC branded cap 2200 microfarad 10 volt. But alas my 2200 microfarad cap box is a bit empty at the moment so we're gonna have to put in a junk box cap. Yeah, but this is a Chemicon KY cap it meshes perfectly within spec and KY's they last forever so this is gonna be good. <laughs> Oh, 
And there we go. I've been to move this painted light just to looking at it from the other side. Solvering quality seems to be of pretty okay quality, pretty standard, although we have some manual touch ups down here in the corner for the wiring, which look a bit ugly, but it's not bad. This is a quality paint supply as far as PC paint supplies go. And there we have it. New cap installed. Polarity should be correct. So let's try and fire this thing up in the original computer and see if it makes a difference. Before we do though, let's just take one of the computers in its pretty much original form, complete with dust and all, and see what it does when we apply power. Uh, for all I know, it could turn on. Let's see. Ooh. It's not going to come on mic, but it's squealing at me. Uh, it's trying. And it's... Uh -oh. oh, would you look at that? It's trying to do something. Perhaps it's fixed itself. But yeah, that just goes to show that this is going to be an intermittent issue. Uh, this one has the obviously bad cap and the sound that Power Supply is making isn't pretty. Right, I did notice that uh, our idle power consumption was a bit 4 watts, so let's see if this does something to remedy that, as well as the squealing issue. No, we still have the same idle power cons- Jesus! That startled me. We still have the same idle power consumption. Huh, perfect power factor. That's impressive. Let's see if it'll power up proper. And indeed it does. So the spec of the machine tends to be an Intel Pentium Dual Core E5200, 2.5 GHz, a classic overclocking model and 2 gigs of RAM and integrated graphics. Ah, so yeah, I just can take and wipe the drive, put a better, put a new OS on it and try and run some diagnostics on this machine. Uh, I think it's I have had a quick look at the motherboard, and then one, at least one of these machines inside powered up with another power supply, and it worked absolutely flawlessly, so I'm not expecting any issues. Uh, looking at the motherboard, uh, it's got a fair amount of electrolytics, but they are OST brand, uh, the Black Series, which tend to run very well in my experience. Uh, there are some bad OST caps, these are not those. Uh, and it has uh, a solid caps for the CPU VRM module hidden underneath a big fan. So, with no further ado, let's just wrap this up, put the power supply back together, and give a computer a proper trial. And absolutely worth noting is we are entirely squeal free. Wonder where these. Four watts are getting though. But since we're dealing with an unknown hard drive which didn't originally belong to us, first thing to do, boot and nuke. And while that computer's running some diagnostics, which it's been doing for well over two hours now. So it's looking quite good. I'm going to take the time to fix the other two power supplies that I have because they all have the same issue. Uh, however, since I just had one 2200 10 volt cap, I'm going to check the voltage across it because I suspect it's going to be 5 volts. And in that case, I can make do with a quality 6.3 volt cap instead. Yep, 5 volts. So that's more than likely the 5 volt standby cap. So, 6.3 volt cheap it is. And there we go, two more perfectly serviceable power supplies. I won't bore you with installation in the computers with these two though. And there we go, three perfectly serviceable computers. Perhaps not straight from the trash, but damn near close to it. So, thank you for watching, hope you learned something. Cheerio! Oh, and something I noticed on the one that I installed Windows on, 
The hard drive has been started a grand total of 38 times and has been paid on for, what's that, about 500 hours? So, this thing has barely seen any use. Since the capacitor and the power supply was shot, we, we can pretty much deduce that this thing has pretty much just been sitting in standby for its entire life until the power supply failed. Because that's almost no hours on the hard drive whatsoever. Nice.